All right, welcome back, everyone. We're going to go ahead and talk about another key battle of World War II, uh, the Battle of El Alamein. Uh, some people are big history buffs know about this. Other are World War II buffs, and a lot of people not so much. And again, this just being a survey course, I'm just going to kind of give you the basics of what is going on in this battle. Now, just to refresh our memory of where we are now from our previous lecture, it was Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941, uh, when Pearl Harbor happened, and then the United States gets involved in the war. Meanwhile, as that's taking place, the wars are raging and battles are raging throughout Europe. Remember by now the Soviet Union's in the war. Remember we had already covered Operation Barbarossa over here with Moscow, um, you know, in the Soviet Union, the Battle of Britain, they're still fighting, you know, against them. But this battle particularly is down here in Egypt. The Battle of El Alamein in northern Egypt. And as you see, you know, Egypt, the, the Axis powers with the help of Mussolini um, in Germany, of course, they dominated much of North Africa. And I like mentioning the Battle of El Alamein because it's seen often as a big turning point in World War II. So let me give you some details of what's going on. And then I also have an amazing story to tell you as part of this lecture about Erwin Rommel. If you're not familiar with him, his story is pretty remarkable. So some key words, obviously, it's being fought in Egypt. 1942 is when the Battle of El Alamein will start to take place. And why is it so important? Well, you know, the Suez Canal, right? Uh, the Suez Canal over here, right, that, over here in Egypt, of course. Why is this so vital? Well, you know, think if you think about, you know, moving goods and items and anything out of the Mediterranean Sea into the rest of the world, people go through the Suez Canal. So it's one of the uh, chief significant canals in the world. So it's very important for strategic reasons, um, and that's one of the reasons why you're fighting there. The Germans were led by a man named Erwin Rommel, who was nicknamed the Desert Fox, and the Allies were primarily led by Montgomery, a British guy. And without, again, getting into all the details on this, there's plenty of uh, websites and uh, places where you could find, like, every detail of every troop movement, um, and I'm not going to do that here in this particular lecture, but you could definitely find a lot of things there, and I can recommend some to you as well if you want. Uh, but it's primarily a tank battle. And without, again, long story short, as this rages on for a long time, as we move into 1943, the Allies get the upper hand. They're able to outmaneuver the Germans. They're able to defeat them in these tank battles. And eventually, by 1943, by about May of 1943, I was, as a result of the Battle of El Alamein, and technically there's more than one Battle of El Alamein for anybody watching. Oh, there's more than one. Yeah, I know there's more than one. Um, but by 1943, the Allies are able to secure North Africa. And... I say this is a very important point in the war because, you know, Hitler still got firm control of much of Europe. But by now in 1943, the Americans are in the war. The Russians are pushing hard. The British have had this success in Egypt. Um, and it's at least starting to look like there is a, 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 a light at the end of the tunnel, right, where there is a way to finally defeat Hitler. Now, the Allies realized this, but somebody else realized this as well. A lot of people in Germany, including Erwin Rommel, which gets us to the other part of the story I want to talk about here, which was the conspiracies to try to get rid of Hitler and how Erwin Rommel was tied in all of this. So let's talk about this a little bit. So as we move into 1943-44, uh, there was this movement, this is an image of Rommel, of people inside of Germany that said, hey, we want to get rid of Hitler. He's a bad dude, and the war's not going well. Uh, one, of one, one individual named Stauffenberg, there was a movie called Operation Valkyrie, very kind of more Hollywood uh, made. Um, when I mentioned Dunkirk is a movie as well. Dunkirk, I think, is more historically accurate than Operation Valkyrie. Uh, but Operation Valkyrie tells the story of Stauffenberg and, you know, this great attempt to try to assassinate Hitler. Well, Rommel got caught up in this plot to assassinate Hitler. Um, you know, from what I recall reading about all of this, uh, Rommel himself was not too keen about the idea of ha having Hitler assassinated. He more wanted Hitler out of power. 
Um, and so he was on board of getting Hitler out of power. But, you know, what ended up happening is this this attempt to kill Hitler failed. And this was not the only attempt to kill Hitler. There were actually more than one attempt. Um, and I believe in the movie Operation Valkyrie, they kind of touch upon that a bit. Um, but the, the plot failed. And as the plot failed, Hitler found out that Rommel was part of this conspiracy to get him out of power. And even though Rommel was this amazing general for him, he basically told Rommel, you know, you have two choices, either commit suicide or I'm going to go after your entire family, at which point Rommel actually just took a cyanide pill and committed suicide. And so just one of the amazing stories we get out of World War II that, again, you know, this just being a survey, I'm just trying to give you some of the highlights of the events. Uh, but this is definitely something that we associated with the World War II period. So that's pretty important, the Battle of El Amin and this whole turning point of the war. So now what? What's coming up next? So as the Allies take control of North Africa and the British are still strong and the Americans are moving in, there's a lot of other conflicts. And again, I'm not going to go into all the other conflicts, but eventually people realized that if you're going to break Hitler, you can't just do these little battles anymore. And I hate calling them little battles. Every battle's massive, of course. Uh, but you have to do something even more dramatic. And from there, of course, we're going to have to get into the story of D-Day, right? The Normandy invasion of, of France, the invasion from England into France. Uh, before we talk about the D-Day invasion, there's one other quick lecture I want you to watch, and that's called the Battle of the Atlantic. Uh, before D-Day can ever be launched, you need to have control of the Atlantic Ocean. So we're going to do a little video on the Battle of the Atlantic, and then after the Battle of the Atlantic, we'll talk about D-Day. And I will tell you now, when we get to the D-Day lecture, you know, I've been to Normandy, and I always tell this to all my students, that when I first planned to go on my trip to Normandy, I was like, oh, this is going to be a cool little trip. I'm going to go, and uh, I'm going to find all these historical sites, and I'll be able to use them for my lectures, and all that's true. But it ended up being more of a pilgrimage because it affects you so much emotionally, and you'll see that when we get to that. So first, make sure you watch the lecture on the Battle of the Atlantic uh, so you kind of understand what that was about. It's a very long battle, and after that, we'll jump into the D-Day story, um, and then after D-Day, we'll get into the Pacific and how the war ends in the Pacific. So that's kind of what's coming up moving forward. All right, hope all that's clear. Thank you, as always. Let me know if you have any questions.